What's up, Film Jammers? This week, we're taking a look at some tips that film school probably won't teach you. How to shave a poodle? No. So we've made a few feature films here and we've learned quite a few things the hard way. Lost hard drives, lost money to shady distributors, lost locations. So hopefully you won't have to. Now on the flip side of all this, we did sell our last feature film. So happy endings do come true. If you watch Film Jams, it can come to you too. Hoo, 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 hoo. Film <laughs> So did I go to film school? Yeah, I went to film school, brah. Emerson College in Boston. But a lot of the most useful information that I learned was by going out there and making my own films, by networking with other filmmakers, and by doing contests and attending film festivals. And from experimenting and doing a lot of things the wrong way, you can learn the right way to get your film done. So let's take a look at five things film school won't teach you. Go to film markets and talk to sales agents. Making a big splash at a top tier festival is great if your film gets in, but there are other ways to sell your movie. We connected with a film sales agent at the Cannes Film Festival in France a few years back. Talk to these film salespeople and see what types of films that they're looking for. The needs often change from year to year, and you can just literally go up and talk to them. They have booths set up like at a typical trade show, and they want your movie just as much as you want to sell it to them. The sales rep there told us that they had a need for holiday-oriented family films that year. So we whipped up a quick script and shot Elf at Saves Christmas, a family holiday movie. And he sold the movie, woo! Now we didn't have a theatrical run and we didn't play at any film festivals, but we are in nearly every Walmart across the country and we're also on iTunes, Amazon, Vudu, and a lot of other places. So talk to sales agents at film markets like Cannes in France and American Film Market in California each year. Ask them what types of films they need that year and you might just make some money from your movie. Set a date. I can remember talking a lot about making movies and actually I still do and I, I talk a lot about making movies. A lot of talk. Hey, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to her. <laughs> Getting out there and making a movie and making it real with momentum behind it is a whole nother thing. One thing that has helped me get that momentum is simply setting a shoot date. Now, you might not have your script finalized, you might not have all your cast and crew and locations yet, but if you have that first day of shooting and you set it in the calendar, you can start to motivate your cast and crew, and most importantly, yourself to make sure things are getting done. This is one of the great things about film festivals. They all have entry dates and deadlines. Often these deadlines have given me a reason to stay up three nights in a row to finish my color correction to get my film in on the entry date. On my last feature film, we had a really short window to finish post as it had to be ready for Christmas that year. We had to meet that distributor's deadline. So it was either get it done by September or wait a whole nother year to sell it as it was a Christmas movie. Papa didn't want to wait. So use deadlines to motivate your team and yourself to get your film done. Enter a 48 hour film contest. Short film contests are some of the best crash courses in filmmaking. Now there are a lot of short film contests, but I love the 48 hour film contest because it forces you to make a movie in one weekend, which is great for a lot of reasons. One, you can network to meet new crew and actors. Two, you can sharpen your skills as a director, shooter, editor, without the constraints of a paid gig. This has led me to experiment a bit more with lighting and visual effects. Three, you can learn how to interact with crew and actors under pressure. Making a film in 48 hours is a lot of pressure. It's like a steam cooker for film. And four, you'll have a completed finished film that you can learn from. A 48 hour film is never going to be perfect, but it does force you to make quick decisions on the fly to get it done in time. And making good quick decisions is a great trait for a filmmaker <laughs> or a pilot. At the end of the weekend, I found it really helpful to sit and watch the film that we made and see what decisions could have potentially helped the film for next time. I've done about 10 of these 48 hour film contests myself. We were doing about one a year for a while. And it's really interesting and pretty fun to see how our films have evolved over the years. So overall, a short film contest is a great way to experiment with filmmaking, hone your skills, and to meet other local cast and crew to work with. Like me, I want to audition as Batman. Hey, I like bats. <laughs> I'm Robert Pattinson. I'm available weeknights, Monday through Friday. Smaller cities like film too. Smaller cities can be great places for filmmaking. Not only do they have local businesses that may be very willing to offer locations and food to help you make your film, but smaller cities often offer incentives to attract filmmakers like you to go there and make a movie. So for example, St. Petersburg, Florida here, where we live, offers a great cash incentive for filmmakers to come here and shoot. They've had filmmakers from LA, Canada, and all over the country come to St. Petersburg because they have that incentive program. You shoot a local film or a web series in some of these towns and they will give you money. That's what you want. 
trust me. I'll include a link below in the description so you can check some of that information on incentives out. Also in a big city, simple things like parking your vehicle can be a big ordeal. We recently filmed for three days of my last feature in New York City and parking there was ugh, ugh, terrible. We went to literally three parking garages and we're quoted anywhere from $50 to $75 per hour in Manhattan. So while big cities might have the glitz and the glam and the amazing vegan cupcake shops, take that big dairy in your big dairy air. Smaller cities can offer unique locations and passionate locals who might be key in getting your film from script to screen. Find someone who can critique your work honestly. There's nothing worse in filmmaking than a yes man or a yes woman or a yes dog. I see it all around at film festivals, events, the Catalina wine mixer. People are afraid to give criticism, but to me, the worst thing is someone saying, your film was great and nothing more. I know I see a thousand flaws when I watch my films. So find someone who will give you honest feedback. It might be a collaboration partner or a Facebook or Reddit group, or maybe a weekly film meetup in your town. So wherever you can find some honest feedback, use it to make yourself a better filmmaker. You know, I really love this episode, Film Jams. I'd say it's perfect. Great stuff, Film Jams. Best episode ever. Really good. All right, well, I hope these tips were helpful. There's definitely a lot you can learn in film school, but getting out there and making films can definitely bring your filmmaking to the next level and hopefully make it profitable. So talk to sales agents about what types of films they need. Set a date to make your film. Try competing in a 48 hour film contest to hone your skills. Check out smaller cities for incentives and passionate locals to help you make your film. Then once you're done, find people who can give you an honest critique of your work. I'm Christian with Film Jams. Make sure to subscribe for new videos every Tuesday and Friday. <laughs>